All right, you're back with the most shadow band man in the land. Here we go. Um, I'm going to just use my mic just in case. I hope I've been coming through loud and clear on these videos. And uh, despite the um, uh, Jerry rigged slash ghetto setup, you've been able to hear the documentary uh, Money Trail made by Press TV. This particular episode was the global corporatocracy. As promised, I'm going to um, try to save these for posterity here on YouTube because we all we all know that again when you have an an opinion that is contrary to the interests of the of the powerful of the rich and powerful capitalists who control the world, um, and and in addition to being capitalists, they're also most of them uh, are from a certain tribe with um, religious ties to the state religion of Israel. So that's just just in case somebody would, would like to try to label me um, uh, as a shill because I'm not uh, using the J word, which um, I, I must avoid in order to stay here on YouTube. But once my new website comes to the forefront, uh, in addition to my old one, uh, I'm going to get in touch with GoDaddy and see if I could uh, get it reinstated. I don't know if um, it was wiped out uh, during the purge uh, that they recently said they wiped out um, alternative media that is um, a friendly towards Iran, um, you know, which again, so, but, but, you know, you still get these right wingers like Alex Jones and others who um, pretend as if the United States is the good guy uh, and against the globalist where the, the United States and the banks and corporations that control our country are the main catalyst for globalization. They don't respect any borders, boundaries, ethnic groups besides one. They respect one ethnic group, and it just so happens that um, just like the, the practitioners of uh, Israel's state religion, um, they don't recognize other people's ethnicities, but uh, they recognize their own. And um, our government here in the United States, unfortunately, follows suits. It looks out for the interests of one particular ethnic group above all others and um, undermines everyone else's. So it's unfortunate, but um, that's the topic for another video. This is about uh, corporations uh, dominating the political landscape. And, um, you know, these, these episodes are priceless, and I think uh, the, the best one was the International Banking Cartel. It's one that got the most views before the channel was terminated. So with no more delay, let's uh, finish this video up. Please donate if you can. If not, hit any of those buttons um, affiliated with my channel. I always appreciate it when you do. Tell a friend who's going to tell a friend about Lamar Aismo and Rudolph Barsic, by the way. Uh, the... Uh, extraordinary Croatian uh, European patriot who's uh, also a truth teller and knows a lot more about Russia than I, I ever will but let's get into this content uh, and um, hope you enjoy again donate if you can politics of this country you don't just give money to presidential campaigns you don't just give money to congressional campaign committees smart players put their money in the states Alec has forged a unique partnership between state legislators and leaders from the corporate and business community. This partnership offers businessmen the extraordinary opportunity to apply their talents to solve our nation's problems and build on our opportunities. I was stunned at the notion that politicians and corporate representatives, corporate lobbyists were actually voting behind closed doors on these changes to the law before they were introduced in state houses across the country. ALEC uh, has been, I think, uh, a wonderful organization. Uh, not only does it bring uh, like-minded legislators together, but the private sector uh, engagement and partnership uh, in ALEC is, is really what I think makes it uh, the organization that it is. You might have heard the name ALEC in the news lately. The American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC for short. The American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. ALEC is a nationwide consortium of elected state legislators working side by side with some of America's most powerful corporations. They have an agenda you should know about, a mission to remake America, 
changing the country by changing its laws, one state at a time. ALEC creates what it calls model legislation, pro-corporate laws like this one that its members push in state houses across the country. ALEC says close to a thousand bills, based at least in part on its models, are introduced every year, and an average of 200 pass. This has been going on for decades, but somehow ALEC managed to remain the most influential corporate-funded political organization you've never heard of. I've been involved in Arizona politics uh, for a very long time. Every lobbyist that you have in Washington, D.C., there's a counterpart to that lobbyist at every state legislature throughout the country. In Arizona here, there are full-time lobbyists that do nothing else but represent business interests in order to get legislation passed that is favorable to business no matter what expense. They don't care what it does to the people. All they care about is getting their client the uh, legislation that they want to create a more favorable, more profitable business environment for them. Well, the legislation is largely uh, crafted and engineered uh, to serve the interests of the transnational corporations and the financial institutions. Uh, for example, now uh, we see a lot of attacks uh, that have been carried out over the last several years against public education. Uh, they uh, put the notion uh, within the mass media that uh, public education is inherently inferior to charter education and private education. And this is done in an effort uh, to attack uh, the youth I had to pause it there. I'm sorry to uh, interrupt this uh, important work once again, but one of the, my personal hero and one of the biggest in human history, Mikhail Bakunin, one of his uh, pillars was equal opportunity in education. And if um, Thomas Hobbes, you know, God bless his soul, and you know, because he was one of those individuals who attempted to raise the bar for humanity via philosophy, but um, he he asserted that because he was a proponent of monarchy, which uh, you can't blame him for being the product of 16th century England. But um, one of his arguments for monarchy was that why would a king want to have a stupid, poor? or impoverished dirty servants you know why, why would he why would a king want his uh citizenry or or subjects to be uh in, in bad repair um which you know may, may, you know it makes sense when you think about it on on a practical level because if a king wanted to hold on to his territory and have a prosperous kingdom of course he would want the best for his uh subjects but uh, uh when you get um the tribe involved or, or you could actually forget the tribe you could even have a king who just um for whatever reason whether it be psychopathy or just uh malice towards the people or hatred towards people um could actually want the worst for his people and um that brings us up to the day these governments uh seemingly don't care about uh, the people that they're supposed to serve uh, a good example is the german government the German government now um, does immigration policies that are definitely uh, detrimental to the German people, but they don't care because I'm pretty sure the powerful there get uh, the money under the table through lobbies, uh, just like here in the United States. So, you know, if, if a king's interest is to, what would help him uh, live a better life if it were to impoverish or to make his uh, subjects miserable, you know, it doesn't go beyond reason to believe that would be the case. So, you know, and again, the same thing could be said of these modern governments. It looks like they don't care. What they care about is the money. And uh, the people who print the money uh, have control over the money. And, and those people are Rothschilds, House of Savoy, House of Windsor, Kuhn, Lowe, Warburg, Israel, Moses, Seif, uh, Rockefeller. Uh, I don't know if I said Warburgs, but they're also... So you get the idea. Now, with that being said, let's continue. So you do need equal opportunity in education if you want your people to be prosperous and great. But the United States um, hasn't been interested now. On an interesting side note, too, I'm sorry. But um, there was a study published that said the, the, you know, being racist may have cost the United States trillions of dollars by not trying to improve the condition of our, which, which stands the reason. Because if you're going to have 30 million people, you should want them to be in the best shape possible to make your economy and society better. But 
No, not when you get uh, Confederates and Neo Confederates and their uh, Zionist overlords, and you know, in the picture. Let's continue before I um, use all my allotted time on uh, commentary. Uh, within the educational sector, uh, we've also seen it uh, in the areas of uh, the uh, pharmaceutical industry, uh, where certain uh, drugs are marketed uh, to uh, hospitals and to uh, consumers in order to maximize profit. And of course, they are able uh, to uh, earn tremendous amounts of money uh, in the uh, pharmaceutical industry as well. Lisa Graves, a former Justice Department lawyer, runs the Center for Media and Democracy. That's a nonprofit investigative reporting group in Madison, Wisconsin. In 2011, by way of an Alec insider, Graves got her hands on a virtual library of internal Alec documents. She was amazed by its contents a treasure trove of actual ALEC model bills. These are the bills that were provided by the whistleblower. That's just the index. <laughs> there were more than 850 of them. 850 boilerplate laws that ALEC legislators could introduce as their own in any state in the union. Bill to change the law to make it harder for American citizens to vote. Those were ALEC bills. Bills to dramatically change the rights of Americans who are killed or injured by corporations, those were ALEC bills. Bills to make it harder for unions to do their work were ALEC bills. Bills to basically block climate change agreements, those were ALEC bills. When I looked at them, I was really shocked. I didn't know how incredibly extensive and deep and far-reaching this effort to rework our laws was. She and her team began to plow through Alex documents, as well as public sources, to compile a list of the organizations and people who were or had been Alec members. They found hundreds of corporations from Coca-Cola and Coke Industries to ExxonMobil, Pfizer, and Walmart. Dozens of right-wing think tanks and foundations. Two dozen corporate law firms and lobbying firms and some thousand state legislators, a few of them Democrats, the majority of them Republican. ALEC is a corporate deity service for lonely legislators and corporate special interests. Then eventually the relationship culminates with uh, some special interest legislation and hopefully uh, that lives happily uh, ever after is the ALEC model. Uh, unfortunately, what's excluded from that equation is the public. It's really time that the American people woke up and uh, Reevaluated how our government is working because it, it's it's dysfunctional right now. It's highly dysfunctional. The American quality of life has been degraded and has continued to be degraded. Yet the very very wealthy get richer and richer. Uh, time and again, we're seeing consolidation of wealth in, in fewer and fewer hands. I'll repeat it again: the rich get richer and the poor have children. And that's as plain as I could say it. That's one of my father's favorite sayings. I have to repeat it here because it's never been more appropriate than it is now in this day and age in the United States. Well, thank you for watching. Always follow the money trail. Well, that's a good way to conclude it uh, because the poor people do have uh, kids. And part of the reason why the birth rate is so high in Africa, one man from Kenya actually said that the only pleasure... Uh, that he can get out of life is sex because uh, he lives in such squalid conditions. So, <laughs> unfortunately, yes, um, it looks like poverty does lead to more and more children as well. And uh, under capitalism, you know, population growth uh, is not a good thing uh, at a certain point. But let's conclude this video here. Thanks for watching, and God willing, I'll see you uh, later on tonight in more videos.